So what are you learning now? I signed up for three new online courses, Advanced HTML, the Dummies Guide to Data Structures and Algorithms, and the History of Ruby. Wow. Today, we're going to talk about decision fatigue and how to focus your learning so you can get that first software development job. Taco Lim asks, love me some decision fatigue. There are too many things I want to learn and there's only one me with finite time to learn them. How do I pick what to focus on? Oh, that's a great question, and a lot of people are asking this question, especially when you're just starting out learning to code. Um, the learning to code market and the learning code environment is so broad and so vast. And you're looking at what other people do for a living, and if you, if you pull 100 different programmers, they're going to give you 100 different things that they know how to do. And so what you should really be focusing on right now is, what do I need to do to get a job, to get paid? to get a paycheck. And so what I wanted to show you is if you're just trying to break in, there is a certain job role that you should be focused on because it'll give you the broadest, most opportunity that you can possibly have to get that first development job. So the first thing that you need to look at is full stack web dev. Now, if you look across Indeed um, and all these job search sites, you will see that there are literally thousands of full stack web dev jobs opening every day. And so those jobs can vary in ranges of like skills and techniques and stacks. And I'm going to talk to you about this specific stack also that gives you the best opportunity to break in inside of full stack web dev. The first thing you want to do is look at full stack web dev. Now, what is full stack web dev? Well, that is building an application that performs a business function. And that involves basically three or four tiers of technology. You need a front end language, you need a layout and design language. You need a back-end coding language and some kind of database um, access language. And so all of that together, we're going to put that inside what we call a stack. And a stack is the thing that you use and the tools that you use to build full stack web dev. So the first goal is let's do some research, look at full stack web dev jobs in your area and see how many of those are out there. And they can be called full stack web dev, they can be called web developer, they can be called web application developer. All those kind of roles are the one you're looking for. Now, what I will say is this, is that what we're aspiring to, towards is kind of lofty. There is a lot of things that we need to learn, but I'm going to simplify that all for you. But that's the best job, the best career path, and it's what we call the five-year road to 100K. And so that's really where you want to be. So you can break in with this very easily by doing these couple of things. So number two, the thing you need to do is pick your stack. And again, what I said, the stack is the tools, the languages, and everything I need to know in order to build this database-driven, web-based application or a full-stack web dev. The first thing you need to know is what is my front-end language? And that's pretty much right now is real easy to pick. That's HTML and Bootstrap. And then regardless of what people say, Bootstrap is very alive and well, and it's very makes it very easy to make a website beautiful and responsive, meaning that it'll work on all the platforms from mobile up to desktop. So you're probably already there with some kind of HTML and Bootstrap. The second thing you need is some kind of front-end language. And pretty much there's only one choice here. It's you've got to learn some type of JavaScript, okay? That can be JavaScript, that can be jQuery, that can be Vue.js, that can be something like that, some type of front-end framework. I do not want you to spend the next eight years learning JavaScript framework before you learn to break in. Know enough to be able to get that first dev job. The second thing you want to do is pick what is my back-end coding language. Now, you have a couple of choices here. You can pick JavaScript, you can pick C Sharp, and you can pick something like Java. Um, and so what we're going to lean towards is tell you which one of these that you should pick that we gives you the best opportunity to get that job. And then finally, the last thing you need to do is learn some type of SQL. And this gets divided up in a couple of ways. You may learn link to SQL and SQL, but you need some type of database in your project so you can demonstrate that you can store and receive data. So that's going to be your stack. Now, what stack should I pick? look at c -sharp .net development jobs across the U.S. You see that there's a lot more of these opportunities available for you. If you look at junior.net development jobs, there, it dwarfs all the other types of stacks out there as far as abilities that you can have to get a job. So there's a lot more opportunities for you to break in. Now, what is the .net stack? Now, it also consists of tooling. 
And so the tooling is going to be the thing that you want to learn is Visual Studio right now at their time here is Visual Studio 2019. And that tooling allows you to simplify a lot of your development activities. We believe here at Code of Friendly that is the best IDE available. You also can use VS Code, but if you're going the full stack web dev route, go ahead and get Visual Studio Community Edition. That is kind of an all encompassing tool that has everything in it already and you don't have to assemble your debugger and all these other things inside of VS Code. It makes your life a whole lot simpler just starting out. So what VS Visual Studio allow you to do is allow you to do some very really cool things like scaffolding views, scaffolding your database, and make all of this kind of CRUD operations very simple and very easy to do, especially when you're starting out. So you can build that full stack web dev a lot faster than trying to figure out all these other tools that you got to kind of pull together and to make all of that work. What you're going to learn is C Sharp as your backend language. And C Sharp is a general purpose programming language that can allow, that sets you up to do a lot of things. Right now, we're focusing on full stack web dev, but you can also use that C Sharp skill to build games, to build iOS and um, Android apps, as well as things like VR and AR experiences. So it sets you up really nicely for the future. But as you know, you said you had decision to feed fatigue. So stay inside that full stack web dev box and learn um, the, the .NET framework C Sharp. Now, what I also want you to do is I want you to adopt a design pattern. And I think today still the best design pattern to adopt inside of full stack web dev is MVC, which is model view controller. Now, I don't want to go into like what MVC is, but what it does is allows you to in a consistent way and using a pattern, build websites that can do anything. And so once you understand this pattern, now you have a consistent, repeatable way to build a website that does this, that does this, and does that. And so, and then you'll, you'll start learning that these are the same kind of activities over and over and over again. And so what you need to do is get some tutorials that teach you C Sharp and .NET, the MVC design pattern. So get an entry level tutorial, something that's going to get you off the ground really quickly. We're talking like weeks, not months. And then what you need to do is take a project that you want to build, lay out that on a piece of paper and write down the things that you want to do. Now we call this in the business an SRS or a software requirement specification that will allow you to say, what are my features and benefits of this application that I want to build? Now, you can track your vinyl collection, your pop phone code collection, whatever it is that you want to build, um, the movies you want to see, all those things, you write down what you want this to do. And now you take your little bit of learning that you've done and you start trying to build that. Now, at Coder Foundry, what we do is we, our students will build one, two and three applications using the same stack. The common mistake that I see people do is they'll build an application one way and then they'll build another application a completely different way and they'll build a third application another way and they never really gather expertise inside that stack. I want to focus your learning so that you can learn more and more and more and deeper and become very proficient in building MVC full stack web applications utilizing C Sharp in the .NET framework. If you do that, then you'll have something that's very concrete to show an employer. And you can show an employer the stack that he uses on his job, and that aligns your goals and your experience and your learning with that. It's really hard as a rookie or a code newbie breaking in to show someone something written in Rust or Ruby, and they do C Sharp at that place. They don't trust that you can pick up the new language yet. And so what you need to do is align your learning, that the portfolio with the needs of the organization. If you do that, you have a better chance at breaking in. So to summarize, number one, you need to pursue full stack web dev. Number two, you need to solidify all of your learning inside of a stack. And what we're telling you and our advice is, is to learn the .NET stack, utilizing Visual Studio and stay in that stack and use that really well, build one to three projects with that and then start showing that to employers. Anyway, I hope that helps. Good luck and keep coding. If you're trying to break into that first software development job, I wanna give you the five essential steps to do that. At Coder Founder, we've pushed hundreds of people through this job roadmap. We'll tell you what to study, what to learn, how to interview, and how to get that first software development job. That's coderfounder.com slash job roadmap.